Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Shenzhen I.O. For which, uh, in this episode, we are joined by a special guest. I have Rose here in the studio with me, so to speak. <laughs> the studio! <laughs> yeah, the studio apartment. Uh, um, so, we're just going to get started here. Uh, I talk, took her through some of my earlier puzzles, so she has some idea of what's going on, but um, uh, she's not intimately familiar with all of the bits and pieces yet. I'll just pretend I'm in an EE class, it's fine. That's right. Uh, so we got... This this say cheese is this uh did we read this one no all right so okay remember when I said I only had one thing to complain about Westerners living here oh that's right he complained earlier about Westerners just think they're so funny when they say I thought China was communist why is everyone buying things at stores apparently every Westerner says that so it doesn't seem very funny yeah uh, okay well he found another one so sorry but here I go. It's complaining about cheese. <laughs> That's right. Talking non-stop about your precious, precious cheeses and how they don't exist here. Definitely not in the quantity, quality, and variety that they do in France or Wisconsin or whatever. Well, it might be hard to wrap your head around the fact that an entire civilization and one of the top culinary traditions in the world was developed entirely without curdled milk solids, but it's true it happened. Which is not to say I don't like cheese myself. I do. Late at night, you even might find me at the McDonald's on... Shannon Road eating cheeseburgers like the gluttonous young modern global citizen that I am. <laughs> I'm just saying there's plenty of good and legitimate food that exists without cheese, and it's not like you're going to die for lack of it. Anyway, when you take a picture, you don't say cheese in China, because why would we say that? You say eggplant. You heard me. Cheesy? Say yeah? Say it right and it sounds kind of like cheese. Maybe. Okay, but we have a new product that we want to build, which is a personal sandwich assembler. <laughs> Yo, dogs. <laughs> Yo, dogs. I was out drinking last night and realized. <laughs> you know what Americans love? Sandwiches. Am I right? Americans cannot get enough sandwiches. I sketched out a quick design for a patriotic sandwich machine where you put in white bread, bologna, mustard. It could play a song when it finishes. Haha. -ha. More details come later when I'm less hungover, maybe. I have a keypad that will work for this, but it uses normal Xbus, which will block until a key is pressed. You will figure it out. Okay. Double Sandwiches. Sandwich maker. So we have a lot of outputs. Good heavens. Bread, meat, cheese, mustard, and flag. Because you have to put a flag in the sandwich. Uh-huh. Keypad is an Xbus input connected to a keypad. That's the thing on the left. And it's a blocking one. Previously, all of our Xbus inputs have been the non-blocking type, which were annoying, but sometimes useful. So this one's blocking. We'll see how that goes. Bread, meat, cheese, and mustard are simple outputs connected to mechanisms that dispense those ingredients. Flag is a simple output connected to a motor that raises and lowers a small American flag when the sandwich is complete. When a value is available from the keypad, read it and execute the corresponding command in the following table. OK. So we have cancel. All right, we're going to be using RAM for this, I imagine. Uh, cancel is just throw everything away. Hold the cheese is don't add cheese. Extra mustard is add extra mustard. Sandwich time is make the sandwich. According to verification tab. Yeah. So what order do we have to make the ingredients in is what I want to know. All right, so this guy sent us two, one, and three which means all of the things, right? Hold the cheese and extra mustard. So we have to make them in order. We put the bread on, then we put the meat, then we'll we put the, the cheese. cheese. Well, we would put the cheese. Right, we're holding the cheese. Yeah, and then we would uh, put the mustard for up to, for one or two time units, and then we put the bread back on, and then we raise the flag. All right. So in theory, we could save all of the state that we need in registers, but there would be a lot of registers, right? Of registers. Um, it's not a huge number, right? You just need where am I in the sandwich assembly process? Well, no, you need to store the state of like uh, which things we need to save, like before the user presses do a thing. Before the user presses make the sandwich, you have to store. Can I put answer cheese on? Right. The extra mustard, extra or mustard, no cheese. and right or no cheese, whatever. I mean, that's only two things to store. I guess it is. And you could store that. You could store that in one register as like a bit mask kind of thing. Although it would probably be a base ten bit mask because that's how the digit operators in this work. Right. 
I'm not suggesting that that's necessarily the right solution. I'm just observing. That yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It, maybe, maybe using the rewrite RAM is excessive. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> um, so some things that we definitely do well that I think we want. Part not recommended. Yeah. So we haven't gotten to the the level where they think we should use these, but I use this guy like. If you use some not recommended parts, you can really uh, make things a lot more efficient. Um, so I think we want this guy... Hmm. I mean, you only ever want to activate one of red bean cheese mustard and flag at a time. Yes. Um, and likewise flag. Like, they're all... You activate at most one of them at any given time, yeah. which is fine. Yeah, I know an appropriate multiplexer This is the only multiplexer um, that there is. Alright, I mean, you can chain two of them, right? Or does that not work? Chain two of them? No, because these inputs are X plus inputs and these outputs are simple IO outputs. Okay. Um, now we could just use two of them, which seems sure. like an okay way to do things, although... I have to say, it seems like these three go together, uh, and bread and flag kind of go together, don't they? That's fair. I mean, those three... Hmm. Bread and flag are both different special cases, right? Exactly, right? So we might just have this guy do a simple thing, and then um, wire these up some other way. What am I even doing? I mean, you're building a sandwich assembler. Yeah. It will, I hope it will be a bigger success than the multicolored light-up vape pens. <laughs> <laughs> Did you build those? Yes, it was a great deal, but then the, uh, the, the uh, music artist who was going to distribute them got arrested for entering the country with a lot of drugs. And we had written a bad contract that did not get us any money as a result of this. Oh, whoops. Yeah, just like Silicon Valley, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Is that what Silicon Valley does? I don't know. Uh, okay, well, all right, so this is sort of like maybe planning a little bit too far ahead is figuring out what to do with this garbage. Yeah, maybe, maybe you have a reading for inputs. Yeah, first. well, reading the inputs is pretty simple, I think. Um, yeah, so, okay, so if we're storing the whole thing in one register, like, because we only need two bits of state in theory, right? Um, well, you need two bits of input state and then... Yes, right. The state for where you are in the sandwich with someone process. Yes, although often the state for where you are is just the program counter. Sure. Um, so, we could almost fit that onto just one of these guys, I think. Um, hello. Wow, we have a lot of space over to the left. Uh, we could almost fit that into one of these guys and use its, like, ACK register. Um... Well, we certainly couldn't use its act register because um, we're going to need somewhere to save the inputs. Because as soon as you read an X plus value, it's off the wire. Right. So if you need to compare against it twice, like you've got to put it somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, although what input? What are what are all the inputs that we can get? I guess we can get three. There's four different inputs we can get. Yeah, four. There's minus one. Yeah. So we can't even do something clever like you can do a test compare, which is like. If it's less than this value, then be in minus mode. If it's greater than this value, then be in plus mode. And if it's equal to this value, then be in neither mode. Right. Um, but that wouldn't even help us that much because we have four of these things. Um, <sighs> hmm. So it seems like we need a register to store the value in. Okay. Now. Conceivably, we could use like the read-write RAM for that, but it seems kind of silly. So let's just grab this guy who has two registers, often useful as the main controller, and uh, we'll wire up his keypad is X bus. So let's put it over here. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit nicer to use this one. Surely you want it closer. Well, I can always, I can always move. I mean, we'll see. Uh, you know, the wires are free, of course. Right. I might need more space here, but if I do, it's super cheap, super easy to just move this. 
Uh, so step one is pretty simple. We move x1 into probably dat. Mm, I don't know. Are you going to do arithmetic on it? I don't know. Let's move it into dat. Maybe I'll do arithmetic. Yeah, I'll store the thing in act that actually needs to be a bit mask, and then I can do arithmetic on that. Uh, so first we're going to say what? I thought you decided that the inputs were a bit mask. No, the inputs are not a bit mask. I need to, I need to treat them as a bit mask I by see. doing things to them. I see. Uh, so we got to sleep x for x1 before we can actually read it. Um, now we're going to do some testing on this thing. Um, test equal dat of, let's see, 1. In that case, we will add 1. We'll call that the low order bit. And, oops, plus. Um, otherwise, test equal dat of 2. In that case, add 10. You want that to be an otherwise and then one No, because then we would add 11 in the case of receiving a 1 because we wouldn't run this test and we wouldn't right. reset the flags. Right, gotcha, okay. Um, that's something I've tried to do a few times and I just can't make it work out. Um, now, maybe we could figure out how to use a test compare at some stage in here, but, um, okay. So let's also test equal um, minus, dat of minus one, in that case, we will sub ack to reset it to zero. Makes sense. And. And if you do that, you probably also want to jump back to the beginning. Well, no, because oh, then I we'll see. just We're test. Just reading right now. Yeah. And then we'll just test. So, like, this is the most straightforward thing I can think of, which is test equal dat of three, then move ack to x2 over to the sandwich assembling machine. That we're gonna have to write at some point. Right. Okay. And then. Uh... Oh, I see. Then sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this guy doesn't really need to do very much. We can jam him over here pretty close, as you suggested, and figure out how to actually assemble a sandwich. Uh. It's pretty simple, right? You start with bread. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What do we need? Well, let's let's assume we can use one of these guys. So this is one with no simple out, simple I/O output. Instead, it has two. Oh, that's probably not the kind we want, though. We'll just use one of the basic chips. Okay. We'll use the X X three, I guess. <clears throat> oh, and in this case, we need to move. Um. We need to sub back again because we're actually making a sandwich at this point. Right. Uh, don't you need to have read? Oh, I see you moved. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Now, so what we're gonna do here is basically sleep x on x zero, move x zero into our accumulator. Ah. Yeah, we don't really have a good. Uh, Exactly. All right. Um, now, uh, so maybe we need a larger one here as well to give us that extra mm -hmm. space. Yeah, it looks like you wouldn't have enough room for code. Yeah, probably that too. Okay. So step one: sleep X on x1, move x1 into... Yeah, we're gonna need to move it into both places, really, right? In order okay. to do arithmetic on it and then recover it. Right, right. Is yeah. this the right solution, then? Well, what else do you think we can do? Well, I don't know. I'm just, this is a pretty roundabout solution, so... 
I that's I certainly need someone who will remind me to take a step back. Um, some of my worst solutions have been when I did not go back and rethink my assumptions. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking we need this large one because we need two registers. Right. No, I'm not worried about this large one. I'm worried about should we take a further step back and not, in fact, do a bit mask on the input. And it's only two things, right? Yeah. So it's three states. Okay. Is that relevant in some way? Right, because the three states we actually care about are, uh, I guess it's four states. Right, because there's two bits. We do have two bits worth of state. We have two bits worth of state, but we, we just need those two bits worth of state. Yes. Um, so... Is it simpler to pass them as two bits worth of state? Well, we... We have to store them before we can pass them, right? How do we even get, like, it would be fine, probably, to send two bits over Xbus separately, no problem, but how then does this guy manage them both? You just put one in NAC and one in DAC. Okay, and then I get a new number. What do I do? Well, is it, oh, I see. Well, you only care if the number is negative one or three, right? So, okay. So if the number you get is minus one, you're now in a branch where you just reset act and to zero and go back to start. Sure, no problem. So you don't need to store that. Yeah, got it. If the number you get- Well, so, okay. I'm not, I'm not yet with you because where did I store it in order to determine that it was minus one? I see, you can't just compare straight off x1. I can, but then it's gone. Well, that's right? fine, right? That's all Only if it was minus one is it fine. Well- If it was something else, it's not fine at all. Okay, so, so hang on. All right. So, okay, now if it's three, yeah. you also don't need to store that. Sure. Because you just send your stuff but, over but and reset how, it back to zero. But I just tested for minus one. How will I discover that it was three? It's gone. Ah, I see. So I can't write a switch statement. Exactly. You Not off of an Xbus input. You could off of a register. I see. I see. Right? Gross. Xbus is... Is, it, well, everything here is primitive. Xbus less so, I think, than most. Um, but we're really banging rocks together, like, all the time. Uh, right. Squeezing out the tiniest bit of state that we can. Okay. I see the problem. Um, so, you know, I mean, things we could do. We could use RAM to, you, you know, use two RAM cells that both of these guys talk to, rather than trying to, you know... Sure, sure. Then we... Could save maybe on size uh, of these chips, although I think not because the code to, to actually do all that is pretty small too. Pretty, I'm sorry, large. We, we would probably end up not being able to fit it in nine lines if okay. we were interfacing with that. Uh, especially since you have to like write. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm. I'm not sure we could do that. Okay. I'm. I'm trying to think if there's a simpler way than uh, than building this bit mask. To do things is kind of what I'm trying to think. Sure, about. that would be great. Um, because because leaving it multiplexed as, as two inputs would make life a lot simpler. Here's an interesting thought. We've we've already succeeded in building the bit mask, right? Right. And now the question is decomposing. You could decompose it before you send it. That's not where I'm going. Okay. <clears throat> where I'm going is these these multiplexing chips here are extremely cheap. Oh, they do that. Right. So they do that, which was not super important, you know. Um, but we have exactly two inputs we want to demultiplex. Yeah. And um, yeah, we can use this as like our storage for that, I guess. Interesting. Um, so what I'm thinking is we, we add another one of these guys in the middle here. I think that's a really good idea, based on my understanding of how these pieces work. I think that does what you want. Yeah, so the idea is to add... And then we don't build up, we don't, then we just don't build our demultiplexer by hand because we've got one. It's, it's a chip. Right, and we can just read from each of the two inputs. Yes, I think that's a much better okay. solution. So we're going to end up then using three of these guys, uh, because this one is going to be using all of its simple I.O. ports on reading from this. Right. So it's going to have to have one X input to talk to this guy, one X bus to talk to this demultiplexer, and another X input to talk to another multiplexer, the one for bread and flag. Okay, seems fine. 
Seems like it might be fine. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not yet against the solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... This is nice and easy. Fine. You had put it on X3, so you don't want to fix that. Sure. Um, oh, and we need one more. Uh, X, uh, not not multiplexer, but another X, uh, X plus. To we need to tell this guy, wake up and make a sandwich. Right. Yes. Agree. Uh, it seems kind of silly, doesn't it? That like we have to send him this message, and then he says, "Oh, what should I do? Let me go ask someone else." Yeah, but it's also like it's a multiplexing issue, right? That's a that's a pretty standard piece of, of hardware to it seems like. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. We want to, like, even just wiring this up is a little tricky, which tells me that I'm, like, probably not doing this so great, but okay, here we are. And you can stack those. There's enough room to stack them. Stack? Ah! What do you mean, stack? You can, you can put them in, in line with each other. I don't understand what you mean. So, so your demultiplexer and this guy on the right that you... Yes. Yeah, they can be vertically in line with each other. Yes. Which will make everything new. You think? Right, it will make everything much quicker. Alright. So you want to do this. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I want to move your demultiplexer down. Like, like so. Yep. Okay, how does this help? It makes it prettier. Alright, that's not where I was uh, going. <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll wire this up to here. Um, and we'll just add uh, move a hundred to x uh, three, yeah. saying wake up and make me a sandwich. Um, cast. I gotta move this over a bit. Um, yeah, it has to go like that. Oh my god, this is impossible to wire so what up. What are you doing with x one? I'm connecting it to the multiplexer. Because how else will I read? Oh, right. We're not doing that. We're using the simple I/O to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, we want wh wh whether. Also, you only need two of the outputs from the multiplexer. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So okay. Just checking. And I'm not sure whether this one up here, the, ten, the ones or the hundreds digit, every time I... The spec says that every time I look it's wrong. So like, maybe that's just them running these things backwards, but uh, okay. So if this turns out to be the hundreds digit instead of the ones digit, then whatever. I'll just, that quickly. I'll just send it a hundred instead of a one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's more important that it's the top one than, than uh, what it abstractly represents. That's fair. That's fair. Um, oh, let's simplify this. Mm. There, that's good enough to connect. And then we can do that. Oy, okay. <laughs> that's beautiful. Our creation has come to life already. Yeah, and now we just need mm, this guy to connect, uh, I really hope we don't end up needing an extra control chip. Connect up like that, and like that. Okay. Um, meanwhile, this guy needs to be able to talk to bread, so a bridge seems appropriate. We could route it under this guy. No, we couldn't. There's not enough space. Uh, but bridges are free, so... Oh, well, there you go. They're basically just wires. Yeah. Uh, there. So, this is... Mm, I'm not sure we're going to have enough control for this, but okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> no kidding. It's a rat's nest in here. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so... you're reading X0 to the side if you're, uh, if you're making a sandwich now. Yeah, so now we have to sleep X0. Um... And then just like... You don't care what's on it. You're yeah, just exactly. waking up and making a sandwich. Uh, so test equal x0 to 0. And oh, then... you have to clear it yeah. to read it. Okay. Yeah. Sleep only sleeps until it's ready. It doesn't read from it. So once that is done... 
we need to examine these guys a little bit. Well, maybe we don't. We, we just need to examine them when it's convenient. Um, so the first thing that we do is we we make some bread. That's easy, right? Yeah, we turn on bread. So that is sending a hundred to X2, I guess? Okay. Surely you want to gen that yeah, I, so I haven't thought too much about whether... I think that's fine. I think we can do a gen. Um, gen... X, I haven't done gen over X plus before because it's real weird. Okay. But I think we want to do it, so that's okay. No, we don't. We, uh, yeah, we do. It's fine. Gen X2... Uh, well... 101, right? One, zero. Remember, gen implicitly does a hundred and then a zero, but it needs two time controls. I see, I see. So that's why it's a little bit awkward, is I'm not sure, is this going to actually write a zero? Must be simple I open, so you can't. Okay. Not allowed, but it would have been nice, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Move a hundred, or maybe one, to x2, sleep one, move zero to x2. And there's no way we're gonna have enough room for this if we have to give it three commands for everyone. Yeah... Is that true? I guess so, yeah. Because we're gonna have to issue one, two, three... Oh, hang on. One, two, three, four, five different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what, other, what other controllers do I have? We've, we've got simple, we've got these simple chips you've shown me. Yes. Do we have anything else? We have a muxer and we have ram. We have knots and ands, but they're not useful at all. Right. Huh. Um. I'm just gonna sit here and fidget for a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> These are hard. I, I, I'm amazed you haven't played any Zactronics games before. They're like... No. They're really great. Yeah, they seem great. I had never played one. Um, I know Justin at least looked at TIS 100. I hated it. I loved all of his other games. Could not stand TIS 100. I got like... I don't know. I only got like 10 minutes in before I got super frustrated with Eli and quit. But all the others, Space Chem. My favorite was like... Not, I don't know. The first one that I saw by him was, I think, the second one he made, which was a Flash game. Okay. The Codex of Alchemical Engineering. I can show you that later. It was. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but he's done a bunch. Space Chem is a really popular fan favorite from a few years ago. Right. I so want to build more complicated ships. I know I can't do that. Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> um, so it's starting to look like maybe... I mean, you're going to have to be able to use simple outputs for stuff, I feel like. Well, I'm thinking maybe instead of these, like, these guys here are, well, okay. They're cheap is their main advantage. Right. Uh, the disadvantage is that they require, um, if you want to use them for anything except exactly what they're intended for, you need to offload a lot of code into the controller. Right. Um, here, we're using them for exactly what they were intended for, so it's great. Yeah. These two, I'm a little unclear on. Are they good or bad, right? So what we might do... Is take them out and use very simple chips. Yeah, is take them out and use like these guys. Yeah. Um, this one in particular could just be this. Yeah. Um, and it could control, say, both bread and flag quite easily. It would take one input saying, please start the bread. Right. And then it would wait for another input saying, please finish the bread and then raise the flag. Yeah. And like, okay, so let's do that. Let's let's switch that out. Yeah, so this one we might be able to keep, maybe. <laughs> uh, if we'll not... We'll leave the loan for now. Yeah. Um, okay, wiring time. Uh, can I just dump that in? I can, although the, the pins are all wrong and it's the wrong size. And let's put it in the wrong place and everything is terrible. All right, so who wants to communicate to this? Uh, X2 yeah, up there so. from that guy wants to go, that yeah. wire there, go on. Wants to talk to X, oh, hang on. Let's simplify this situation with a bridge. That seems better. Um, and now, uh, we can 
just x zero is the top one. Yep. Do this. Um, however, now there's no way for p zero to get out. No way at all. I guess it would just wind up connected to itself. So that's no good. Yeah. So we can instead do something <laughs> like. Uh, stop. Not get off. Have um, you considered changing the orientation? You of can't. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, changing which one is top and which one is bottom of your bits on the left. Your your middle your middle row where you've got the muxer and the thing. What are, I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, I'm suggesting that this wiring that is difficult right now. Yes. Which is now a geometry problem. <laughs> would be simpler. Yeah. If we took the two chips that are currently vertically aligned. Uh, what chips are those? Aligned, I have the, no idea. The controller, the sorry, this controller, yeah. that one, and this. Uh huh. And just flip them so that one is the other one is on top. Does that make your geometry problem simpler? Right, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. How hard can it be? You told me it was easy to move chips. Uh, yeah, it's easy, it's easy to move chips, but with the wiring cleanup. <laughs> all right. Okay, so... I mean, all of this wiring was a rough draft, so it's okay, I guess, just like, here. Get out of here, wires. Go. Get out. There we go. I'm not sure I'm actually helping. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, sort of to be expected. <laughs> it is so hard to clean up wires. <laughs> okay. No! <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright. Wires be gone. I'm like the opposite of helpful. You should remove all the bridges too while you're at it. Yeah, of course. But I have to do that separately. Okay, let's get this guy out of the way for the moment, um, and this guy too. Okay. And then we're just, uh... We're gonna put the muxer on top and the other guy on the bottom. Yeah, I'm not really sure how this is helping. It's gonna help, I right. swear. I don't actually have any idea if it helps. So, I mean, for one... Now you can put a really short connection there. Yeah, that connection. Is there a free. reason not to, while you're at it, move that one over? Yeah. Well... It's a little tiny bit easier to read when you're debugging what's on the wire if there's some wire, I think, but this is fine. We I can read it. It'll be fine. You haven't actually looked. You don't know what it looks like when there's a thing <laughs> on the wire. You're just saying it. I am just saying that. Okay, so we can do this. Fine. And we'll write this to say x3, um, which is going to be this guy. Actually, let's have this go out on X0, which is out of the way of everything. Ooh, fancy. This guy will read from that on X1. Why is it reading from that? That's how it gets the sandwich preferences. No, it reads the simple ones. It reads the Oh, memes. yeah, we were going to do that. Okay. Okay, um... I mean, you don't have to, no, but that's no, what no, we no, had you're done. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... How do we even connect up to that thing? It looks kind of hard. Move um, it further back. It'll be easier. Okay. Bloop. Well, geez, if we're doing this, and we don't need that, you know, let's send it out over X3. There we go. Right? Right. So now you've got one P on the front and one P that goes underneath everything. Mm-hmm. Uh... Like that. Um, and you want one on the middle one. Yeah, although it will actually be easier to do it like this, because then we can bridge over. Okay. We can't run underneath because there's no... Well, whatever. Ah! <laughs> okay. See how much cleaner that is? I told you it would be better. Okay. Now... <clears throat> Now we were building a bread controller, a bread and flag controller. <laughs> that's yeah. that's what we were doing when we got into all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, let's um. <clears throat> I forgot to set a timer, but this episode's probably gone on for a little bit. So now that we have some idea of how we're gonna build the thing, we're gonna we're gonna end this episode and uh, try to actually build it in the next one.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.